An even function is a function whose graph is symmetric about the vertical axis. It's as if the vertical axis is acting as a mirror. Here are some simple examples. The simplest of all is the function y equals a constant. It has a graph which is simply a horizontal straight line through the height y equals c. It extends infinitely in both directions and so it is symmetric about the y-axis. Another fairly familiar one is the parabola y equals x squared. Again it's symmetric about the y-axis. Also the absolute value function is an even function. Remember that the absolute value has the effect of getting rid of any negative value that might be on the x, turning it into positive. It has a graph which looks like a pointed V shape with the point or cusp at the origin. Once again it is symmetric about the y-axis. One very important f function which is even is the cosine function. y equals cos x has period 2 pi so it repeats itself in 2 pi units. It has a peak on the y-axis at 0, 1 and it is symmetric about the y-axis. Actually we don't need to restrict ourselves to just cos x we could have cos nx with n any value we like. The period would then be 2 pi over n and again the function is even. It is symmetric about the y-axis. Up to now we've discussed evenness in terms of symmetry, a pictorial sort of representation. It would be good if we had a mathematical way of expressing the fact that a function is even. Here I've drawn a graph of just any old function which is even. I've tried to make it look symmetric about the y-axis. What is it about that function that would allow us to define a rule for evenness? Let's pick a point P on the x-axis and go up to the graph at the point P f of p. Let's now go an equal distance the other side to negative p and go up to the graph and it's the same height. So that would be p f of negative p and because of the mirror symmetry those heights are the same so f of p is equal to f of negative p. This property would have worked wherever we chose p, anywhere along the x-axis. So that's telling us that the rule for an even function should be to say that f of negative x is equal to f of x. This expresses that f is even. We can actually use this property to check whether a function is even. Here's a little exercise. Show that f of x equals x to the 6 minus 2 over x squared is even. What do we do? We write down f of x, just the function itself, and then we compare it with f of negative x. Remember that we must include the negative inside the powers and because the powers themselves are even negative 1 squared is positive 1 so we end up again with x to the 6 minus 2x squared which is the same as f of x. For this function f of negative x has been shown to equal f of x, so f is an even function. If you think about it, we could use the same argument to show that all even powers are even functions.
I'd like to conclude this presentation by looking at another property of even functions connected with the area under the curve and consequently with their integrals. Here I've sketched a function and tried to make it look even. and I've allowed the sketch to develop from negative t to t along the x-axis. Let's think about the areas given in this sketch. On one side I could shade in the left hand area and let's call that A1. In different colour on the right I could shade in A2. Clearly because the function is symmetric about the axis A1 is equal to A2. In terms of integrals, that means that the integral from negative t to 0 of f of x dx is equal to the integral from 0 to t of f of x dx. Another way of writing this would be to say that one half of the area is precisely that, a half of the whole. So for example we could say that the integral all the way from negative t to t of f of x dx is actually twice either of the other areas. 0 to t or also twice negative t to naught. This property is particularly useful when we come to study half-range Fourier series and need to do integrals of even functions to find out the coefficients in the series. This will be discussed further in a different screencast.